what we realized was, hey, we have not very much control, yeah. but we have a lot of influence, right? So mm -hmm. we can really influence and help guide things, but at the end of the day, very little control. And, and I think you've got to be okay with that, right? You got to be okay yeah. with, I'm going to influence, I'm going to do my best. But at the end of the day, you, you don't control everything. And so when you, when you kind of step back and have that mindset, it does, I think it frees you up a little bit mentally, emotionally to, to handle things better. Welcome to Push To Be More with me, your host, Matt Edmondson. This is a show that talks about the stuff that makes life work. And to help us do just that, I'm chatting with my very special guest today, Brett Curry from OMG Commerce about his adventures in business, basketball, and what it's like having eight, that's right, eight kids. Now the show notes and transcript from my conversation with Brett today are going to be available on our website pushtobemore.com. Uh, on our website you can also sign up for our newsletter and each week we will email you the links along with the notes, the transcripts and all that sort of stuff aut automatically as we like to say. Direct to your inbox totally free and it's amazing. So make sure you sign up. Now this episode is brought to you by Orion Media, which helps entrepreneurs and business leaders set up and run their own successful podcast. Now, I have found running my own podcast, I have three of them. Uh, Brett is gonna be on all three. This is the second one that we are recording. Uh, I found it a really rewarding thing to do. It opens doors to amazing people like nothing else I've ever seen. I've built networks, made friends, had a platform to champion my customers, my team, and my suppliers. I think just about every entrepreneur and business leader should have a podcast because it's had a huge impact on my business. Now, of course, this sounds great in theory, but in reality, there is the whole problem of setup, distribution, getting the tech right, knowing what the right podcast strategy is. The list goes on. You see, I love talking to people, but not all that other stuff. So Orion Media takes it off my plate. I do what I'm good at, and they very brilliantly take care of the rest. So if you're wondering if podcasting is a good strategy for you, for your business, then connect with them at orionmedia.com. That's A-U-R-I-O-N media.com. And we will, of course, link to them on our podcast website as well, pushtobemore.com. You can also find them there. So, let me read the bio. Brett is a seasoned entrepreneur, a digital marketer, a podcast host. He leads an eight-figure ad agency on uh, of Google, YouTube, and Amazon marketing rock stars. Brett, as I said, is a father of eight children and a basketball coach. Sounds like he's got his own basketball team, to be fair. Brett, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Hey, what's up, Matt? Uh, thanks for having me on again. I know again because we're on uh, I'm on the different podcast, but <laughs> super excited about this one, man. I love the theme. I love the focus. And so I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, mate. No, it's awesome. And uh, it's great to have you back. So OMG Commerce, this gives a brief overview. Yeah, so we're a performance marketing agency. Uh, I am a marketing junkie. I've always loved advertising and marketing and what why people buy what they buy. And so we, we have really three key areas of focus, the Google and YouTube, kind of the Google ads ecosystem. So we help drive growth through Google and YouTube ads. Uh, email marketing, so we run email marketing for direct to consumer brands. And then Amazon. So we basically do full channel management on Amazon from the organic side of Amazon to Amazon ads. So people that sell physical products on Amazon, we help them grow and scale and get and get more customers. So uh, we run creative strategy. We kind of do mm -hmm. the whole the whole nine yards and help D 2 C brands, direct to consumer brands grow. Fantastic. And it's fair to say, uh, Brett, that. Um, you've been doing this a, a wee while in digital, because if you measure, measure digital years like dog years, right? It's, um, which is what we do in e-commerce. <laughs> I think it's fair, right? Like we, you, we pack so much into a year, like a, Google, you know, makes like 500 algorithm changes in a year or whatever, you know, Facebook <laughs> wow. is always changing. Everything's changing, right? So yeah. yeah, one year in digital marketing has got to be like four or five or seven, you know, in another industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So we've, you've been around a while, I've been around a while. Now yes. I'm intrigued, right? Um, you've got this business, this agency uh, that does digital marketing. 
uh, and yeah, by all accounts, very successful at it. Uh, we got in connected because we have a mutual friend, Jared Mitchell, who just is one of your biggest fans. I have to be honest with you, you just totally. He's a great guy, man. We like we become we become bros. We started working together doing client stuff, and now he's you know one of my one of my closest friends. He's just an awesome guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny is that with Jared, isn't it? We he came on the podcast. I ended up going and spending a few days with him with my daughter in the uh, on a trip to the. I don't know what it is about the man. He's magnetic, and it's it, but he, he is really is. Totally, yeah. Yeah, totally. yeah, totally. You, you can't help but love the guy. But he is like one of your biggest fans. So by all accounts, right, you, you've been successful in, in business. But I guess my question, I just want to start off a little bit about this. Has it always been uh, like that successful? Has it just gone from strength to strength or has there been a few sort of hiccups along the way? Uh, it's a great question. So definitely there have been some some hiccups along the way. I think in a lot of ways it has been strength to strength, right? I've always, I think, had a skill for connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And because, because I love people and because I want to see people grow, I think I earn trust pretty quickly. And that, that happened from a young age, right? People like adults trusted me. Adults wanted me to do things. I, I was elevated to leadership positions in, in school. I was just, this came up the other day, I don't know why, but I won best citizen <laughs> <laughs> my senior year in, in okay. high school. It was like a, a weird award, whatever. But anyway, so, so that's always been there. Um, and I, I've always had kind of this entrepreneurial uh, spirit within me, right? Mm -hmm. Which is weird because my grandfather on either side, they, they weren't entrepreneurs. My dad was an entrepreneur. My mom wasn't. Uh, but I just had that in me. Like I just wanted to build something and do something mm. and wanted to take risks. And I think I, I know at least part of why that's there. Um, but no, definitely I've had some hiccups. Uh, learn a lot from failure. And I don't mind admitting it uh, that, that I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but no, I made some mistakes when I first started the business, which was right out of college. Of course, you know, weathered the, the Great Recession of 2008 to kind of 2010. That was super interesting made some leadership blunders, right? When, when, when we started building, OMG started with myself and my business partners, just like one employee. And as we started building a team, man, I made a ton of mistakes on building a team. And, and we, we've since, you know, I think we've won like five Best Workplaces Awards now, which is really great. Oh, congratulations. And, and so I think our heart has always been in the right place. We've always wanted to do the right mm -hmm. thing, but dude, I made some boneheaded moves <laughs> um, in, in the early days uh, as far as being an employer. And so, so yeah, yeah, lots of skinned knees along the way, but you got to keep growing and, and move yeah, forward. you do, you do. So, what are some of the key things you've learned then about leading people? If you've got, because you've got like what seventy, you mentioned seventy, yeah, almost seventy. So we're in the sixties, you know, give or take. Um, yeah, so it, it's been interesting. It really was hard for me to go from like being the one doing the work, right? I was doing all of it, and I don't, yeah. I don't mind getting my hands dirty and like working in Google ads and writing ad copy and just like doing the work. I like doing the work um, to kind of going from that to then working with a team. So now I'm, mm. now I'm doing some work, but I'm working with the team to really go into coaching right now. I'm mostly coaching and training and overseeing and, and kind of going from working in the business to working on the business to working above the business in, in certain ways. And so, so that's been, uh, that's been challenging, but I, but I think, uh, there's a few things, you know, uh, first of all, hiring good people, like really, mm -hmm. I almost relate this to marriage, right? When we, my, my wife and I, we've been married for 22 years, which makes me feel really old. I'm only 42, but I've been married <laughs> 22. We got married as kids and, yeah, um, yeah. you know, talk to other young people, whether at church or wherever I'm, and you know, one of the biggest pieces of advice is, is choose your spouse carefully, right? This is yeah. going to be the parent of your kids. This is going to be someone you eat dinner with almost every night, like all, all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. So, so choose wisely. So we hire for culture first. So culture yeah. fit is number one. And we've got a, a pretty clearly defined culture. But, you know, we we think like owners. We have fun solving problems. We help each other level up. So we're we structure our questions to kind of uncover, is this person really going to fit the culture? And we, and we look at their history and we have other mm -hmm. data points and stuff. So we, we hire well first and then we we support, we train but we expect a lot of our people, right? So mm -hmm. we, we always say it's a really fun place to work, not an easy place to work. Okay. Uh, but we will, you put in the effort, we will help you. Like, uh, and, and the team, the team will, will help you and uh, push you and help you, you grow. Um, and so then I think you, you got you to trust your people as well. So you, you do those things right. You hire well. 
you train and set clear expectations, then, then you got to trust your people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's an area that I've had to grow in over the last few years because I, I would uh, I, I wouldn't have said this out loud, but I didn't always trust the team. Right. I felt like right. eh, when it comes to a client decision or a client interaction, I can do it better. Right. So I'm so I'm going to do it. <laughs> and uh, that's no way to scale. Mm -hmm. And it's also not fully true. It's only true mm -hmm. in like a couple of areas. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ideally, you hire the right people and they're going to be way better than you in in a lot of key areas. And so. Yeah. So yeah, so th those are just a few things that come to mind. Mate, there's so much there. I mean, geez, uh, so where do we, <laughs> so we can pick in on that? I love this idea of hiring around culture first. This was something that we did, um, or a decision that we made. I, I remember the switch in 2012 when we when we figured this out. And um, and so we we had this, I it all started because we, uh, we opened up one job 400 people applied for that one job, right? Whoa. And I'm like, how am I supposed to read through 400 mm -hmm. CVs or resumes, right? It's just, and so I, you know, I had a, I developed a process. I thought I'm not doing this again. And so when we, going forward, we did the same thing. We're like, no, let's hire around culture first. So we, anybody, every time we want we offered a job out, we're like, you've got to fill out this questionnaire, right? Yeah. Uh, this yeah. application form. I don't want your CV. I don't want your resume. I don't want a cover letter. That's what I want first. And if you don't send me yeah. that, I'm not even thinking about the job. Exactly. So that whittles exactly. everybody down. And we had this thing about um, being superheroes and how if you, were, um, if you were culturally connected to us as a business and also quite competent at your role, you were a superhero. And we were looking for superheroes or we were at least looking for superheroes we could train right who would who would grow to be a super and this, this is kind of the language that we used the reason i'm telling this story is because i remember one time we had a, a job uh, advertised for marketing and a lady filled out the application form which was a bit nuts i mean it, you know we asked people to draw their superhero costume and all that sort of stuff and so if you if you couldn't <laughs> fill in the, yeah yeah if you couldn't fill it in you just definitely weren't going to be the right fit and um, this one lady, not only did she fill in the application form, she persuaded her friend to deliver it to the office in person, dressed as Batman with a tray of cupcakes. <laughs> wow. Wow. I was like, we, that would never have happened if I was just like, send a CV and cover yeah. it up to two, dot, dot, dot. So I, yeah. I agree with you. Well, I love that. And, and so someone that goes through the effort to do that, they're not going to be the person that three or six months into the job is like, hey, that's not my job description. I'm not doing yeah. that. Right. You didn't hire me for that. They're, they're going to be just a I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever you need me to do. I'll go above and mm. beyond. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on the result rather than just eh, that's not really in the job description you gave me. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're big believers. We, we, we have people fill out an exercise that's related to their role. Uh, we ask very specific questions to like describe a time when you did blank, right? And it's mm. all designed to, I want to hear a story. I just want you to like talk platitudes or, or whatnot. I want you to tell me a story about when you did this. Mm. Uh, we do personality profiles. I don't think you can like fully bank on those. I think it's just, just another data point. Yeah. Um, but we, yeah, we, we take it very seriously. So you, you got to hire for culture first and you want to just make sure it's as best as you can tell that it's, that's a good fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, before we hit the record button, I said to you, what's your life motto? And you came up with a Greg Rochelle quote, didn't you? Which uh, I think yep. applies quite aptly to this. Do you want to tell the good folks what that was? Yeah, I love it. So, so Craig Rochelle uh, hosts the Craig Rochelle Leadership Podcast. I think one of the top downloaded leadership podcasts. Yeah, He's also yeah. the pastor of the church that I attend. Awesome guy. And uh, so he said, uh, his quote is, be yourself. People would always rather, people would rather follow a leader who's always real rather than one who's always right. And, you know, we want to, we all want to be authentic. We want to be ourselves, right? And we want to be in a place where we feel the freedom to be ourselves. And so if the leader is trying to be someone they're not, if we're mm -hmm. trying to be fake or phony, that's going to bleed into the rest of the team, right? And so uh, obviously there are certain things that every leader needs to do, but you got to bring your own flavor and your own style to the equation. And I think people have got really strong BS detectors, right? They know when you're not being <laughs> authentic. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we've had some real, like just some real gut honest team meetings. And usually the one, usually the meetings when I'm vulnerable or just say stuff how it is, uh, 
that's when I get the, the, a, lot of, a lot of good feedback from the team being like, hey, thank you. Mm. Thank you for sharing, for sharing that, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. And you're right. I think if you've got a good team, they'll, they'll be quite happy with that. If you've oh, got really? the wrong team and you're vulnerable. Yeah, then they'll like, out, to, how right? can I angle yeah. on that? Or how can I uh, uh, leverage that or use that against you or, or crazy stuff like that? But if it's the right people, transparency makes a huge difference. Yeah. So what do you think has been your biggest leadership fail? So that's, that's a really good question. Um, when it comes to team, I've got one story. So, so I mean, I think if we, if we had to, to just talk in a high level, mm. it's not trusting the team soon enough mm -hmm. or not empowering the team soon enough. And this, we'd have to go back several years now, you know, mm. with, with a team of 65, 70, like there, there are people running a lot of different areas of the business and I fully trust them and it's great. Uh, but I think that was one of my biggest hurdles, but the, I've got a, a pretty funny and pretty embarrassing story. It'd be funny <laughs> if it wasn't true okay. uh, related to leadership that I'll just tell because this, this is one that I think people will, uh, will remember for sure. So, um, it was early on in the business. We had maybe, uh, you know, less than 10 employees. I don't remember uh -huh. the exact number. And there was one team member who really just wasn't getting it done. She just wasn't getting it done. She was pretty young. She was in her young twenties kind of a friend of one of our other employees and, and really sweet girl. And um, she just wasn't cutting it. And so we kind of talked about the leadership level. Uh, we, got, we had to let her go. Uh, her name was Sarah. And um, so decided to have a meeting with her. And, and by the way, she had no clue, no idea, no idea this was coming. No coaching, no like, hey, you got to improve these things. We're just yeah. meeting with her to let her go. So I remember it very clearly. I was I was like stuttering through the opening and like, hey, so how's it going? And it was a terrible opening. And then I was like, hey, we're gonna have to let you go. And um, she lost it. Like she burst into tears. She like smacked the table. Her head head hit the table. It was really emotional. And uh, long story short, by the end of the meeting, I unfired her <laughs> because, because I felt like. I didn't, I, I gave you no warning, no training, mm -hmm. no help. I'm just firing you. And uh, so anyway, I, I fired and then unfired her. And and then I think it was like, and things did improve. And like, we had some good heart to hearts after that. She ended up leaving like five months later, or maybe maybe three months later, it wasn't that long uh, after that. But, you know, since that's always this like lesson burning in my mind that you got to be upfront with people early mm -hmm. on, right? Like, hey, mm -hmm. this, this is not right how do we how do we tweak this so when you did yeah. this didn't work so how do we correct it right to where now and we don't want to fire too many people it does happen but yeah. uh we, we hire well but now when someone's getting let go it's usually not a surprise right they, mm. they, they see it coming and so so yeah that was a big one that was a big blunder um we'll we'll always live in infamy the day i fired and unfired an employee in the same <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you have to if you have to let someone go now do they go no bro are you sure are you sure? Is there any way I can talk if I, if I get really emotional right now? To, we, we, if we I smack my head on the tape. Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> exactly. yeah. That's really uh, funny. Mate, we've all been there, right? And I think this is one yeah. of the things that um, leading a group of people, you're like, there are times when you just get so frustrated and annoyed with your people, but you have to look at yourself and go, hang on a minute. How much of that is on me? You know, totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah, how much? How much is this? Is just unclear expectations, right? Mm -hmm. And my uh, my good uh, friend Ezra Firestone talks about, hey, if there's a communication problem, if someone is not understanding, then that's on you, right? That that's yeah. on you to communicate better. Uh, it's not on them. If they if they then do understand and can't execute, then that's on them. But like if they're not getting it, it's on you. You got you got to explain better. So I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh man, so can I? Um, how did? You've built this business with 70 staff or almost 70 staff in somewhere in the 60s. But you've built a family with eight kids. Right? Yeah. So just <laughs> was it the same? Uh, you know, did you and your wife sit there and think, right, we're going to we're going to build a business and we're going to build a We're going to build a, a family and we're just going to go big or go home. Right. It's just there's no middle ground for us. <laughs> totally. It's like, hey, what would be the clearest path to happiness? I think it's just if we create chaos in every area of our lives, right? Let's, if, if we live in a state of chaos, it'll become comfortable. We'll love it, you know? Uh, no, it's a great question. So, I mean, I've, I've always loved kids and I love family, right? So I come mm. from a family of, there were three of us, which isn't huge, right? My, my wife comes from a family of, of four 
And so we always thought we'd have a bigger family, like four or five was kind of the number that mm -hmm. we floated around. And then Matt, we just, we just overachieved, you know, we just went for it <laughs> and, uh, and overachieved. But uh, no, we, eight was not the number we had in mind, um, but you know, would not trade it for anything. Uh, mm. It does come with its own unique set of challenges. I think there are times where our kids would be like, geez, I wish, uh, I wish there were a few of us around here, but, but not for the most part, right? They, they, they're mm. pretty close. There's an interesting dynamic, you know, the, the oldest is 20, youngest is six. And so there's this, it, it's almost like an uncle relationship for the oldest and youngest, mm -hmm. but the way they interact is really neat. And so, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really, I think in both situations or right, when you have a team that's, that's beyond your ability to, to manage individually, or when you have a, a family that's just really, really large, you got to kind of stretch a little bit and realize mm -hmm. I can't do everything but I can, I can influence everything. Right. And we, mm -hmm. we, my wife and I had this discussion and I won't go into too, too much detail here, but uh, we had, we had some issues with, with one of our kiddos. Right. And um, just, just kind of making decisions that didn't line up with the way we'd raised them and, and just, you know, some of those things. But um, what we realized was, Hey, we have not very much control, yeah. but we have a lot of influence, right? So mm -hmm. we can really influence and help guide things, but at the end of the day, very little control. And, and I think you've got to be okay with that, right? You got to be okay yeah. with, I'm going to influence, I'm going to do my best. But at the end of the day, you, you don't control everything. And so when you, when you kind of step back and have that mindset, it does, I think it frees you up a little bit mentally, emotionally to, to handle things better. So, wow. Wow, it's fantastic. I, I, when I think of you, I think of that movie, Cheaper by the Dozen. <laughs> yeah. I can't be the that first one person that's movies, that said that. Actually, and, and our kids, especially when our older kids were little, that was like one of their favorite movies. Yeah, yeah I can imagine uh, there's a lot of, uh, it was the Steve Martin film, wasn't it? If people haven't yeah, seen Steve it. Yeah, Steve Martin and uh, the other guy that played uh, Superman in Smallville. I can't remember his name. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, my, I think my kids were like, hey, look, it's a family that's bigger than us. This is crazy. And so, uh, so yeah, we've always loved that and, and related well to that. So. so how do you, um, if you don't mind me asking, how do you manage or balance like being a husband, being a dad to eight kids and being the CEO of OMG Commerce you know, with 70? How do you balance that? Yeah, yeah. So it's really difficult. Um, and, and, I, and I think, you know, looking at this, this life is definitely not for everybody, right? And I'm sure people are listening to being like, well, duh, yeah, of course. I, 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 I don't want to trade with, don't want to trade with you. Um, you know, we don't have a ton of free time, right? So, so like there's not a ton of, hey, we're cruising through all the Netflix series and, and you know, I read all kinds of fiction books and stuff like that. Um, so really it, it's mostly building the business and doing stuff with family and, you know, doing stuff with church and my wife and then like sleeping. And that, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I mean, we do fun stuff, but it's always like, it's always together, right? I don't, yeah. I don't have like a, yeah, I spend an hour, two hours uh, by myself a day. Like, are you kidding me? I, I, I'm by myself for like five minutes a day, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, so it, it is difficult to manage. I think, um, you know, being centered is important. So I do, I do try to take care of myself. I've always been interested in health, mental health, physical health. I've since really had to, to double down on that just because mm -hmm. there are so many pressures you know, where I'm, I'm really watching my diet, not, not because I'm like, Oh, I've got this weight loss goal. It's like, no, I, I, I need to be at peak performance, right. To, mm -hmm. to not fizzle out, to not burn out. I need to be at, at peak performance. And so looking at some things there, uh, I am always trying to listen to podcasts or learn, or how, how can I be a better leader? How can I compress time or just get, mm -hmm. you know, get more value out of my time? Um, but yeah, don't really have hobbies, Matt. I don't really, I don't, I don't play <laughs> golf. I don't, uh, I, I do love basketball. And so I get to play basketball with my kids or coach my kids, which is super mm. fun. So like that's, that's, uh, you know, that's entertainment, but it's, but again, mm. it's with the family. We're, we're doing yeah. stuff together. Uh, we do vacation, uh, together, you know, a few times a year and, and thankfully been blessed enough that have a good team, have a good business so we can, we can travel. So we do mm. that. But, uh, but yeah, and, and then with the team, it's like getting, getting the right reader, leaders in place and the right, right people in place so that, you know, not every area, of the, every area of the business is dependent on me and it's not, right? So I could, I could step away now for a couple weeks or more and like the business would still run, you know? I, uh, I think mm. the business still needs my direction and my strategy and, and um, oversight, but, but not in the day-to-day -day nearly as much as it used to be.
I can imagine, Brett, that you've had to learn how to um, delegate quite well, both sure. in business and in family, right? If you've got one yep. kid, it's easy to do everything for that kid. If you've got eight, there's no chance you're doing everything for that kid. And yeah, I assume awesome. you're, yeah, your kids have had to learn, I'm guessing, to do an awful lot of stuff that maybe the single kid hasn't had to do. So so I, am I right in saying that this, this lesson, this, the life lessons are basically about delegation? That, that's a huge part of it, right? So delegation, asking for help, you know, wh what I've heard people say is, hey, for big families, a lot of times the kids grow up uh, pretty, uh, not, not, not so, like not dealing with selfishness as much as maybe in, in other families because mm -hmm. it's never just about them, right? Because it yeah. can't be, there's, there's eight of you. Like, so it's, we've got to do stuff in pairs or do stuff together. And so, you know, the older kids have really learned responsibility because we, we need their help, right? We need their mm -hmm. help to, to assist us with, with little people. We have to sacrifice a little bit, right? Where oh, essentially all of our kids are involved in sports and extracurricular activities and we're, we're doing fun stuff, but like we can't do everything, right? Like mm. you have to choose. And and sometimes the youngest have to wait a little bit to get involved in a sport because we're so busy with the olders. And so uh, there, there's some sacrifices that, that go there, uh, which, which is important. But, but yeah, delegation is huge. And, um, you know, allowing our kids to step up and do things themselves, which is a really good life lesson in mm -hmm. itself. And I think that's true for the business too, right? I, I learned early on that, hey, for this thing to grow, uh, it can't be about me because I, I mm. there's only so much of me. And uh, yeah, de delegating is a, a huge part of how I survive. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I like that you, you know, you, it's not just about delegation, it's about letting every, you know, the, the, the kids step up and, and contribute. Yes, and empowering that, and training. Yeah, because then it's not all on you, is it, to come up with all the ideas. And actually, you, it's, it's good when, I mean, I my, I don't have eight. I have three. So I, you know, I'm just part time. Uh, just still dad more than a handful. Like, it's still, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still very very busy. Yeah, but my oldest is 21, and so, um, and the kids, I think, are, you know, my kids are great, and I'm proud of them, and they're super responsible, and they're, you know, they're very caring people, um, and they're not afraid to work hard, and you kind of think, well, that's awesome. Uh, but I, I'm curious to to know how you did the whole. Um, or how you do the whole uh, time thing. So do you do it whereby, hey, I'm in the office from eight till six, and then I'm at home six till 10, and then do you, are you that regimented or is it a lot more fluid than that? It's a little more fluid. Uh, I mean, I do work mainly, you know, normal hours, eight-ish to five or six-ish, but there's some days when I have to work late, of course. Um, some days I'll start at home, try to do breakfast with the kids and then go into the office. So do a little bit of work hour or so before breakfast, then go to the office around nine and, and work till, till five or six. Uh, I do try to be uh, present in the evenings. I think, mm -hmm. you know, we, we try to eat meals together, you know, three to five times a, a week or more during, during certain sports seasons that becomes harder, but I really value, highly value those family meal times. I think, yeah, those are, especially when, when there's not sports going on, those are kind of non-negotiable. Um, so we, we focus a lot on those. And then, and then I try to make, you know, Saturday, Sunday, mostly about the family. Occasionally I have to work a little bit Saturday morning and things like that. If we're going through a real period of growth or big projects or whatnot at work, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, I try to keep that fairly regimented, you know, try to keep the phone in, uh, in the bedroom or something when we're all at the dinner table, you know, so I try to try to focus yeah. on the family during those, those key moments. Uh, but you know, what it's like as an entrepreneur, I, I, d I do find myself thinking about business all the time mm -hmm. and, uh, and occasionally, you know, working late nights or working super early mornings and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, so it just, just depends on the season. Yeah. I like that. It, 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 it does tend to go through seasons, doesn't it? You find yourself yeah. into sort of different seasons in life. And I think as long as you realize it is just a season, Yes. Uh, then, yes. then life's good. So, how does your, um, uh, how does Mrs. Curry deal with all of this? Does, does, does she, um, does, she, does your wife work? Or she does she not. No, and, and thankfully, mom? yeah, I mean, she, she's full time with, with the kids. And, and to add another layer of complexity, Matt, uh, we homeschool our children, and so <laughs> that is a growing trend in the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, out here as well, know, actually, funnily enough. Is, is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So when I was a kid, it was a little bit different. My wife was actually homeschooled, um, and so it was it was different when she went through school. It was kind of frowned upon in a lot of ways. But like we we go to it's more of a hybrid. We we go to a, a cooperative um, mm -hmm. 
one day a week and then there's other tutoring and other opportunities to, to learn from other people. But there's like 500 kids in this cooperative and we've got an awesome sports organization. So really great football program. I coach the girls in basketball. And so, and there's speech and debate, just, just everything you, you could, you could hope for. Um, so, so that's even another area of complexity, but now Matt, now that I started answering that question, I actually forgot what the, <laughs> I forgot the question you were asking me. Well, I was, I was kind of curious if your um, wife worked or whether she was full time with the kids. And then, and in hindsight, yeah, yeah. I realized there's maybe people listening to me asking that question going, well, how is that not working? Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, in I terms of, I and, not, I, and I don't mean to be disrespectful by totally, it. Yeah, totally get it. I have always said I have a way easier job. Like, like <laughs> yeah. CEO of a company, you know, 65, 70 employees, uh, easier than, mm -hmm. than homeschooling eight children without a doubt. Uh, but you know, uh, she's awesome. She's, she's an amazing mom an amazing teacher. She just, she handles chaos. Well, also mm -hmm. she can bring order, um, she, she's, she's amazing. And, and so we've always kind of had though, this, this ability to, to deal with risk and to, to do things differently. Right. Cause mm. like being a homeschool family, at least in some areas, it's kind of different, right? We've always been comfortable being a little bit different. Um, when, when I started my first business, like right after we got married or shortly after we got married, she was okay with it. She was okay with the risk and the uncertainty. And then so was I, I kind of thrive on it. And, uh, but yeah, she's, she's is supportive of the business, supportive of me, supportive of the kids. She, she's just amazing. And really that partnership. And we, you know, for 22 years, we're super close still. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a key to success, right? If, if that relationship wasn't good, or if we weren't on the same page, I don't think I could handle the, the stresses and the, the chaos and the uncertainty of, of everything. If that core wasn't wasn't there of, of that marriage relationship. So how do you, um, if you don't mind me prying, how do you make, how do you maintain that? How do you maintain that core? Yeah, dude, that's a great question. So, um, and, and actually this is one to, to bring up uh, Jared Mitchell one more time. Like I, 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 he shared with me this idea, which we have not implemented yet, but we plan to, where he and his wife, Elena, they do like a date day once a month. So once a month mm -hmm. during the week, kids mm -hmm. are at school, business is running, they do a date day, right? I mm -hmm. love that idea. Um, so my wife and I don't do that. Uh, we do like a date uh, every couple of months. Um, but no, we, we try to at least have a few minutes every day, mm -hmm. even if it's the very last thing of the day when we can focus on each other, kids are not in the room, we're able just to talk a little bit and hang mm -hmm. out, right? Um, we, we pray together, right? So there's like a spiritual connection as sure. well. Uh, we, we're still crazy about each other. Like I, I legitimately like her and love her right so so mm. that is there we do try to do getaways um at least a couple times a year just the two of us so i had a, a chance to speak at an event in los angeles and then in san diego and she went with me and so it was just mm. the two of us and it, it was awesome um so we try we try to do that a couple times a year and those those are really good one to get away from the kids and get away from the all, you know all the mm. stresses and just to focus on each other um but yeah, and then, you know, we're, we're just committed. We're committed to making the family work. We're committed to making the marriage work. And uh, yeah, we legitimately like each other. We, we, had, mm. we had a close family member of ours uh, say one time, they're like, I don't think I know many other couples that like each other as much as you guys do. So, so that, for that, I feel blessed. Like that's just, um, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how you do that. I just, just, I just feel blessed that we, we ended up together. Mm. Um, but yeah, we, there's no real secret sauce there other than what I just shared. Um, you, you just got to try to carve out the time, but it's hard. Yeah, most most days it's brief moments, brief windows of time to, yeah. to be together. Yeah, yeah no. So we, um, Sharon, my wife, and I, we often we we have this sort of phrase: "What's the non-negotiables?" Yeah, and yeah. Um, you know what's what's the non-negotiable in our lives? And so every week we have date night uh, without Love fail. It. Love it, unless I'm traveling, uh, which is you know, but if I'm traveling, we reschedule. Um, awesome. And so we prioritize that every week, right? So I can't right. book anything in that time unless it isn't unless we've agreed it together, and it is an absolute necessity to do that, right? Um, and I, I think there are some things like that, the non-negotiables, where you know, you, you, are you a different life situation with eight kids, but it's that kind of we're going to spend some time together, even if it's just totally. a few minutes, just hanging out. That's a non-negotiable, yes. right? So. Yes. Um, and I think it's things like that that matter a lot. We're going to put this first, you know, yeah. and it, 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 it changes 
I think it, I've been married, you've been married, what, 22 years? So I'm slightly ahead of you. I'm 24. Uh, we're coming up to our 25th uh, anniversary. Awesome. And like you, I, I, I sit here and go, my wife is amazing. Uh, yeah, she is yeah. a phenomenal lady. And mm-hmm. I like you, I have the way easier job. And uh, I, st- I, st- I still really like her. She's yeah. <laughs> she's an absolute legend. I, there's not many yeah. people on the planet that I want to be around more than her. And you kind of think, well, yeah. that's that's very very wonderful to have that. It really, um, yeah, extremely and, grateful. Yeah. Well, it makes the rest of life easy, doesn't it? In some respects, the business it does, um, or at least it makes it valuable. Like as long as you know the core is there, then okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, so what if the business goes up or down a little bit? We'll f- we'll figure it out. Like we'll we'll get through it, right? But having that core there is is what counts, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, fantastic. So you said earlier that one of the key things for you is um, being centered. What mm-hmm. do you do to sort of fill your tank? You know, so we say the podcast is pushed to be more, right? So what do you do to be, yeah. to sort of, to recharge? Yeah, I love it. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a few things that I'm, I'm kind of focused on and, and geeking out a little bit on and in terms of, like peak performance and stuff. Um, I have restructured my diet. So like uh, breakfast is pretty regimented. It's like oats and berries and yogurt. And I'm, I'm regimented on my vitamins. And and lunch is usually pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Occasionally dinner is whatever it is, right? Because we're a big family. I think we're eating pizza tonight. So, uh, but, <laughs> but I've been I got pretty serious about my diet, um, trying to regulate sleep and sleep well to kind of stay centered. Mm-hmm. But in terms of uh, other things that are mentally healthy, uh, I love the five minute journal. So it's, it's a process uh, yeah. of 10 minutes okay. in the morning. Are, are you familiar with it? Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's great. So there's a five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, and you, you start the day with gratitude. You end the day reflecting mm-hmm. on what went great and what could be better. And that process has been really, really good for me. So to, to just remember like what, what happened today was great, right? What, what little mm-hmm. funny thing that my mm-hmm. kids say, or what interaction at work or what, what was special, right? So I, so I do that. Uh, essentially every day. It's very, very rare that I miss. And I've been doing that for probably four years or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do have a prayer time. I know people, you know, talk to people that that meditate or pray or do some focused time uh, in the mornings. I do that as well. I, I read my Bible. I pray. I like, I get that, that meditation time, which, mm-hmm. which is non-negotiable for me. Even if it's a few minutes, I do that. So that, that helps a lot. Um, into cold, uh, therapy. So I've been doing cold okay. showers now for a while. Uh, Thought about a cold plunge. Those are kind of tricky to like get set up and stuff. But I do ice cold shower. We, we've got well water where I live, so the uh, the water this time of year as we're recording is about uh, in the upper fifties uh, Fahrenheit, which is which is pretty chilly. Um, mm-hmm. I do that, but that's like you know uh, just feel great after after I do it. So so focus on that as well. And then I think you know I think it's just remembering like what's really important. You know mm-hmm. what what is what is really important in life and. Uh, uh, you know, I had, had the, the experience when I was 15, my mom passed away. So my mom was an amazing woman, super strong, like just, just like a rock of a woman mm. and got lung cancer and, and died after 16 months. And so at 15, I was still like this awkward kid that really didn't know what was going mm. on, but it, but it immediately, I immediately grew up, right? I immediately grew up and thought, and I think that's part of why I don't mind risk, right? It's like, okay, what, what if what if the business fails? Okay, that's not that big of a deal, right? <laughs> like compared yeah, yeah. to losing someone, no yeah. big deal, right? So um, it really immediately caused me to to grow up and to to value things differently. Mm. So I think I always kind of leaned into relationships. I've always loved people, but like that experience specifically caused me to to lean into people and to to value today, right? Because you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, in the next year or few years mm. or, or whatnot. So, yeah. Wow. So uh, let's talk about journaling for a second. What what yeah. started that four years ago? Why why just four years ago? What was the kickstart? Yeah, so that happened. Uh, actually, I was listening to the Tim Ferriss podcast and he mentioned it. And then I started looking at it and I was like, you know, that's something I could keep up with. I had done a few times when I've like traveled. I did like mm. a trip journal. And that was, you know, fun and easy to do, but then, but just doing it daily, right? So the nice thing about the five minute journal is it, I've got a place, I've got the journal itself and it's got a structure and it doesn't take a lot of time. So, you know, if I had to journal for an hour or something, I probably just wouldn't do it most of the time. And so this, 
this makes it easy and I've b built a routine now to where I just do it and, and I love it and I feel better mentally, mm -hmm. you know, more gratitude, which is better for your health and mental mm -hmm. well-being and stuff. So I, th I think it just makes it easy. Yeah. And do you, do, I think I, I'm understanding you must have a, like the hard copy, you use pen and paper, you don't use like a, yeah. an app for this. Use pen and paper. I, I've got bad handwriting. I try to do most things digitally because I use like Apple Notes and stuff just because I, I like to have notes on my phone for the most mm -hmm. part. But there's something valuable, and you and I were talking about this earlier too, we got to do some things that are not digital, right? We're, just, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're digital everything. So. I like the feel of the journal. It's got like a textured um, cover. I write with pen. I've got a pen that I like. Uh, it's not like nothing fancy. It's a cheap one, but I like it. And um, so, yeah, it's it's pen on paper. And for me, that's that's valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I find I go through seasons where journaling is concerned. And so I don't journal every day, but I do journal. And sometimes I'll journal on paper. Sometimes I'll journal on an app. I've got the day mm -hmm. one app on my phone. And I'm just kind of like... Meh, I, I you know whatever I feel like that day, and it kind of, it kind of works yeah. me. But I'm a big, big, big fan of journaling, uh, yeah. and appreciate it's not for everybody. One of the things that I did um, during lockdown, uh, I don't know if you tried it, but is journeying journaling whilst I'm walking around the park. I'm actually dictating now because the dictation software Ooh, is so good on your idea. phone, and I'm just spouting stuff. Uh, out as I'm as I'm sort of uh, walking around you know the the local park and I find I've never really done that before but I do that a lot now actually uh, people must think I'm not well actually you've got headphones on people just assume you're talking to people these days don't they so I'm okay yeah uh, that's super interesting so uh, what is what is the app are you just using like voice to text on on Apple Notes or something or what, what's the app yeah you know it's, I've just got the, the iPhone and on the bottom key the bottom right of the keyboard there's that microphone button so you can be sure. in any app and so I use the day one app, which is a journaling app, and I just turn the microphone on and I just start rambling to myself. I love it. Uh, I and love it, it. Uh, it, it, uh, it works really well, especially if I'm walking somewhere. You know, if I'm, yeah. I wouldn't do it to sit in a chair here. I'd be like, but I'd, if I'm walking and in a park or some, you know, something like that, it works really well. Yeah, I've never done that. I should try it. I do think well when I'm moving mm -hmm. and I actually... I actually think pretty well when I'm speaking. So I do like to process things, uh, you know, I'm an auditory processor and so a verbal processor as well. So yeah, I'll have to try that. I've never done mm -hmm. that, but um, I like that idea uh, a lot. I'll have, to, I'll have to give it a shot. Yeah. yeah, let me know how you get on. It works, honestly. I'm, I'm the same way. I like, every day uh, I go for a walk, a, a 30 minute mm -hmm. walk around the local park. And um, just, it's one of the things that I do. And it's a great time just to process, you know, a yep. whole bunch of stuff going off in my head. So, uh, no, I like that. So you say you also take vitamins. You have a vitamin or vitamin uh, regimen that you follow. I um, I love that you call them vitamins. Um, <laughs> I, I think there's a few words that that Brits say that I just absolutely love. I think the other one is uh, aluminium, right? Aluminum yeah. is aluminium. aluminium. Love that. Love that as well. But. But vitamins, uh, no, there's there's a, a particular company. We, we did some marketing work for them. They uh, did they do gut health intelligence tests. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's called Viome with a V, V-I-O-M-E. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know that their supplements are better than, than others or whatnot, but what I like about it is they do test your gut and see what you process and what you handle and what mm -hmm. your body needs. So it's like blood test, uh, saliva test, and stool sample like it's so this is like intense mm. yeah, and then yeah. they give you like these are the vitamins that are optimized for you uh so i've been sticking with that um but you know in general i like things that are cold processed and natural and mm -hmm. you know more food based rather than than you know built in a lab or, or chemical based so that that's kind of the, the go-to um i also like mushrooms so i've been been uh, not, not like the illegal kind but um i mean i think there's some <laughs> Health benefits there too. I've actually been listening to podcasts, yeah. and that's super interesting yeah. to me too. But yeah. but I mean things like um, uh, lion's mane and reishi and ashwagandha, and uh, got a good friend, good friend of mine who runs an herb business called Lost yeah. Empire Herbs. And so so uh, try some of those things. Pine pollen. Uh, I'm a big big saw palmetto fan. So for guys, you know, as you get in your 30s mm -hmm. and 40s, can help boost those T levels. Um, so I take I take saw palmetto a couple times a day. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, those are those are the main things. But I, I don't know. Again, I don't know what's driving this. It could be, 
you know, uh, the, the trauma of my mom getting cancer mm. as a kid or whatnot. But dude, I, I don't, I don't miss days with vitamins. I just don't, I, just, I don't have to, I don't have to work to remember. I just remember, I just do it. Yeah. And so, so I take vitamins morning and night, um, hydrate, you know, water and mm. coffee. It's about it for mm. me. That's what I like to drink. And, um, yeah, occasional beer or wine. I'm not opposed. Although as I, as I've Getting older, I find I enjoy them less, which is really interesting. But I, but I love love water and coffee, uh, occasional tea as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. fair enough. I am um, uh, I'm a big fan of a, a, a tea called buttermint. Uh, there's a buttermint, a, a okay. buttermint tea, yeah, by Twinings, uh, and um, it used to be until recently. Twinings is an English company, as far as I'm aware. Uh, they made this tea, um, but I couldn't find it anywhere in the UK. The, I, I had to buy it from the states and import it back to the UK. Fortunately, now it's on Amazon, so I don't have to do that. But I know you can get it in the States. So it's made it. in England, shipped to the US, shipped back to England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very uh, efficient. Yeah, very sustainable as well. Good for the environment. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we, um, we're we glad that that little thing is over. But um, yeah. yeah, like you, I think the older I get, the less beer and wine I drink. Uh, to be fair, yeah, I, really, I really enjoy it. Like I'll enjoy a beverage and stuff. It's just like yeah. if I drink, uh, for me, if I drink wine too late at night, it messes with my sleep. I go to yeah. sleep real easy, but mm. I don't sleep deeply. But I love craft beer. I love good red wine. I just, mm. I drink it very sparingly. So. Yeah, I'm with you. Or gin and tonic. Uh, rum apparently is a thing which is taken off here in the UK. Uh, we've really? moved on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I don't know how many people. So uh, tequila is uh, like yeah. like craft tequila is kind of making yeah. uh, some waves in the U.S. I do like some some quality tequila, and then bourbon. You know, bur- there's like a there's a yeah, Hulu documentary. You feel thinking about bourbon? Yeah. Yeah, you can't go wrong with bourbon. Uh, that's for Indeed. sure. My my middle child Zach, my youngest son, um, he's first year at university this year, and um, I said to him, "So, what do you want for Christmas?" He said a really nice bourbon. And I'm like, that actually makes me feel really proud and I don't know why. <laughs> I do love, so there's a great documentary, it's called Neat, on, it's on Hulu, I think, but you could, you could search, maybe it's on Netflix, I don't remember. Uh, but it's about bourbon and um, like just the stories of families, you know, distilleries mm. and how they make bourbon. And I, and I love the process of like a good craft beer or wine or, and, and mm. bourbon, because bourbon or scotch, it takes years, like like good mm. people that dedicate themselves to the craft, they, they make what, a, a few batches in their lifetime, mm. right? Because it takes 15 years for the really good stuff to age. And yeah, it's super interesting. And if you, if you drink like me, like one thing of um, bourbon or rye will last a, a good decade. Um, so <laughs> the, the, the bottles are pretty cheap when you, when you look yeah. at it that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Brett, my, uh, where do you see um yourself in sort of three to four years time what sort of areas are we looking to grow in to develop in uh to be more in yeah it's really great you know i I want to uh continue to to develop other leaders i think that's kind of the next phase is how do i go from uh, hopefully just being an effective leader to to training and developing Mm -hmm. other effective leaders and you know, want want the business to continue to grow. You know, definitely uh, see us going. You know, beyond the hundred team member mark, and, and likely, you know, approaching two hundred uh, employees. And so, wanting to continue to grow in that, uh, want to continue to see my my kids grow and develop. And you know, we, we've got one that's uh, attending university, and and one that's in the workforce already. You've got a great sales job, and so to continue to develop them, and also hopefully help create some opportunities you know we're actually starting a, a family real estate business that hopefully some of the kids want to get involved in and things oh, like fantastic. that and so so yeah so yeah so we're, we're working on, a, on some family real estate which which will be fun so but i think m- more than anything it's going to be hopefully developing other leaders uh, mm. one because that's it's extremely satisfying and mm. gratifying and i love seeing other team members step up Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be the key to, to growth and to the next level. And so that this is the you know, question I ask myself is, hey, wh- who do I need to become for OMG to reach the next level? Because I know what's going to get us there isn't what got us here, right? And, mm-hmm. and the leader that I am today isn't going to cut it for uh, what the business needs later. And same for my family. You know, what my family needs tomorrow isn't uh just who i am today and so yeah uh, gotta gotta keep gotta keep growing gotta keep stretching uh, uh, and so yeah that, that's that's high level in general kind of what i see mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I can't ever see you sitting still, to be honest with you, but I think I don't I don't sit still. <laughs> yeah, I don't sit so well. You know, I like I like growth for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, uh, listen, uh, this show, as you know, uh, is sponsored by Orion Media, which is all about, you know, helping businesses get set up with a, with their own podcast. Now, you actually have your own podcast. Well, you have two podcasts. Two podcasts. Right? Yeah. yeah. Two podcasts. So question for you um, about your podcast. Who is on your dream list of guests like that have yet to appear on your show and they could maybe tie into the industry maybe not but if like if you could just interview anybody on your podcast who would it be yeah that's that's a really great question so i mean i i, I two podcasts one is called e-commerce evolution I've been doing it now since 2017 it's about what's new and what's next in e-commerce and so so there, you know, I'd love to just interview other great brands, other great, you know, D to C mm -hmm. brands and would love to interview some of the who I would consider like the, the pioneers, uh, like like Andy Dunn from Bonobos or uh, Toby from Shopify or or, you know, leaders from Amazon, maybe not Bezos. I mean, that'd be cool, but I don't think he's I don't think he's interested. Uh, I'm sure he's a listener, but he's probably you know, not, <laughs> not, uh, not interested in being on the show. Uh, I'll other, introduce other you if you like. Yeah, yeah, What's that? I said I'll introduce you if you like. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah, you have a group text between me and, me yeah, and yeah. Bezos. It'd be awesome. Uh, the other podcast is called Spicy Curry because uh, my last name is Curry and we get spicy. But it's hot takes on e-commerce and business. Uh, for that, you know, I, I would love to interview, you know, someone like, jeez, um, uh, uh, yeah, he's a dream guest and I can't think of his name. Uh, Reed Hoffman, who mm -hmm. founder of LinkedIn and uh, has the, the, the Scale Up podcast. Love what that guy's doing. Mm -hmm. I'm a pretty big Elon Musk fan, just the way he thinks differently mm -hmm. about things. Uh, you know, from the, in the early days, uh, big Tim Ferriss fan, still a lot of respect there. Um, and I know he's kind of polarizing, but I, I like I like a lot of what Gary Vee is up to. I think he's mm -hmm. an interesting cat to, to follow. Don't don't love everything about what he does, but I think he's an interesting cat. So that that would mm -hmm. definitely be those would definitely be a few of the uh, some the great guests. Guess. And, and, and also uh, Craig Rochelle, right? He's like. This, uh, mentor of mine, but from mm. afar, right? So, so a yeah. uh, huge fan of Craig Rochelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, um, he's an interesting character, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, no, fantastic. Well, listen, Brett, uh, one, I look forward to listening to those podcast episodes. Uh, so I'll introduce you to Jeff, no problem. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure if I look deep enough, I've probably got Tim Ferriss's number somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, uh, do well, it, man. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. This, is, this was valuable. Look at look at these connections. This is what podcasting can do for you. If you want to hit up the sponsor, and start your podcast. This is what you can do. Fantastic. Oh, I couldn't have planned that any better if I'd have scripted it. Now, uh, Brett, it's been great. So, listen, tell the good folks how they reach you, how they connect with you, if they want to, if they want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, best way if you want to contact the business or get any marketing questions or whatnot, uh, omgcommerce.com. And then there's a couple, couple ways to fill out forms and, and, and reach out to us. I see almost all of those, uh, e even though the company's larger. Uh, would love to connect on LinkedIn. So I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm still connected on the Facebook, right? So uh, hit me up on, on Facebook. And, uh, and you and I were talking about this. I'm going to throw out this out for the second time. So now I've really got to do yeah, it. Yeah, really I'm not active on Twitter yet, but I do plan to be. All my direct-to-consumer marketing friends are like, hey, Twitter's the place to be. It's where mm -hmm. the cool kids are. That's where great conversations are happening about marketing. So I'm, I'm laying out a process now for how I can be on Twitter. So reach out there or, or email. If you got like thoughts on leadership or whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, Brett with two Ts at omgcommerce.com. Love to connect. Fantastic. Now, I, I actually connected with you on Twitter earlier before this podcast. Oh, did you really? Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, Sweet. So, We're locked in. We're making yeah, it happen. Because yeah, so. you're, you're committing to Twitter as well. If yeah, 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 absolutely. We're, we're definitely, um, definitely going to try and get on the Twitter thing a little bit more. So uh, I'm curious to see where Elon takes it. That's for sure. So uh, yeah, yeah, me, me too. And maybe now, maybe, hey, Matt, now maybe he'll want to join both our podcasts. So now that he knows we're committing to Twitter. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, if he can come on yours, actually, no, he'll come on mine first because if he goes on to yours, he'd be like, "I can't, I can't beat this. This is so, this is the <laughs> pinnacle." So, uh, so awesome. like, come on mine first. Listen, Brett. Again, what a legend. Uh, loved the conversation. I love the fact that you are so passionate about people, um, and so uh, just humble and about your business and, and what's going on there, and the fact that you're a total 
I don't know what the word to describe it is, inspiring but slightly bonkers person when it comes to family. <laughs> And uh, I, I love it. Inspiring been... but slightly bonkers. I'm going to use that. I'm going to yeah, use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be a great name for a podcast, actually. Dude, uh, exactly. <laughs> Dang. All right. I like that. Good idea. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, no, thank you for coming on the show, man. Honestly, loved it. You're an absolute legend, and I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Had a blast. Really enjoyed it. No, oh, it's great. So thank you for listening to the show. We will, of course, link to Brett's info in the show notes, which you can get for free along with the transcript at pushtobemore.com or which, you know, if you've signed up to the uh, to the newsletter, it's going to come direct to your inbox as well. Uh, so what a great conversation. Loved it. Loved it. And like Brett said, you know, this is what podcasting can do for you. So do remember this week's show sponsor, Orion Media. If you too are wondering if podcasting is a good marketing strategy for your business, do connect with them at orionmedia.com. That's A-U-R-I-O-N media.com. We will, of course, link to them on our podcast website, pushtobemore.com, uh, and you can find it all there. There's links everywhere. Be sure to follow Push To Be More uh, wherever you get your podcasts from because we've got some more great conversations lined up about life, about business, about how it all works together, and I don't want you to miss any of them. And in case no one has told you today, uh, dear listener, you are awesome. Yes, you are. It's just a burden that you've got to bear. I've got to bear it. Brett's got to bear it. Just got to bear it. It's just the way it is. Uh, Push to be more is produced by Orion Media. You can find the archive of episodes on your favorite podcast app. The team that makes this show possible is Sadaf Bain on Josh Catchpole, Estella Robin, and Tim Johnson. Our theme music was written by Josh Edmondson. And as I mentioned, if you'd like to read the transcript or show notes, head to the website pushtobemore.com where you can sign up for the weekly newsletter and get all of this good stuff direct to your inbox totally free. So that's it from me. That's it from Brett. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.